This video is brought to you by Skillshare. All right, how's it going everyone? So in today's video, I'll be going over how to draw in whatever art style you want. But before that, don't forget, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so through the Patreon or YouTube memberships, which are linked in the description. And we also have a Discord server, which you can join to get advice from me or some other artists. And with that out of the way, let's get started. So first, I just want to get a common misconception that people have out of the way. An art style is just a way of drawing. And as long as you understand your fundamentals, you can draw with whatever style you want. On top of that, an art style isn't really something that you have to find, contrary to uh, what I've seen a lot of people online say with uh, weird exercises to help you find your art style. An art style is something that you have to design. It's part of the same branch of art as character design. You have to actually sit down and think about how you're going to stylize each part of the body. That's also how it goes if somebody gives you like a quick Microsoft Paint sketch and they tell you to turn this into a good drawing. You have to analyze their sketch and then think about what you want to keep and how you're going to stylize things. With all of that said though, that's the ideal scenario. In practice, most artists just resort to drawing things however they're used to. But that takes experience because you have to have drawn enough to know what your favorite way or most convenient way of drawing things is. Anyways, the conclusion is that art styles are a result of conscious decisions and as long as you know what those decisions are, you can replicate them, meaning you can draw in whatever art style you want. So I think there are three fundamentals you need to practice that will let you draw however you want eventually. And those are observation, proportions, and anatomy. But before we get into that, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. You may have heard me talk about Skillshare before, but for those of you who haven't, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes that all cover tons of different topics. We've got things like drawing, animation, game design, music, and these are all taught by industry professionals. Skillshare is a very useful platform you can use to get better at all of the individual skills required to get better at drawing. Like for example, if you want better line control, you might get the idea to look into calligraphy and Skillshare has a bunch of classes on that topic. And if you want to get better at observation, for example, I would recommend Brent's class on measuring and proportions. Now, another thing, Skillshare has this thing called learning paths. Basically, it's a collection of curated classes that are ordered in such a way that every class builds upon what was taught in the previous class with the goal of creating this easy to follow path to help you master a skill. Brent has a learning path revolving around figure drawing with 24 hours of content. So uh, I highly recommend checking that out if you want to get better at figure drawing. The first 500 people to click the link in the description will receive one month of Skillshare for free. Let's start with observation first. Observation revolves around the way you see things and the reason why it's important for art styles is because it allows you to accurately see all of the details that goes into all of these different art styles. To be able to see like an artist, you have to actually practice it. It's not something that you can just do right off the bat. And the better you get at seeing and observing things, the more your eyes will be able to pick up on things that are out of the ordinary, aka stylized. There are three techniques that are the core of observation. I've gone over these before, but I'll quickly cover them again. These are measuring, angles, and landmarks. Now first, measuring involves using an object in the scene as a ruler. When it comes to drawing characters, we're using the head as a ruler because we use the head to measure proportions. And another thing, this is a very two-dimensional technique by the way, so if you're trying to measure these poles for example, you take the height of this pole and then you compare it to the height of the poles in the background. Of course those are going to be smaller because they're further away from the camera but when you're measuring, you just use the absolute height of this thing. So forget about all of the perspective stuff. The second technique is angles. This one basically revolves around accurately observing how many degrees an angle actually is. When it comes to perspective, angles aren't what they actually appear. A 90 degree angle in perspective would look more like this instead of a true 90 degree angle. This effect of perspective on angles is why it's so important to look closely at angles in your reference, because even if you have an object that you know consists of 90 degree angles in real life, because of how perspective works, those angles will be completely different. The last one is landmarks. Landmarks are clearly identifiable points in your image, like points where something transitions from one angle to the other, such as the corner of the eye. It's basically where a line changes its trajectory or where objects intersect with each other. Once you've found some landmarks, you can observe the angles between them and then by replicating those angles, you can actually accurately copy them. At first, it might be kind of annoying to apply these techniques while you're trying to draw, but eventually 
eventually it'll become muscle memory and at that point you're going to get a lot better at accurately observing things. Now the way you would apply this to different art styles is by checking how things would line up. Like for example, how are the eyes positioned in relation to the nose? Also pay attention to the line work, like are the lines consistently curved or are they slightly angular? Pay attention to where the hair is growing out of. These are all tiny details that, when considered alone, might not make that big of a difference. But every art style has hundreds of these details, and when you're trying to copy it, if you ignore a lot of them, eventually your mistakes will just start to pile up and you won't be able to copy the art style accurately. Now the way I would recommend practicing observation is by doing still life drawings. Grab an object, doesn't matter what it is, could be a really simple object put it in front of you and then try to draw it. Try to measure the proportions, pay attention to the angles, try to find landmarks so you can accurately copy the still life. Now the more you practice this, the better you'll get at seeing. All right, next I wanna go over proportions and why they're the building blocks for art styles. Proportions are things like the hairline, brow, nose, and chin measurements that you might've seen if you've tried to draw heads, or the shoulders fitting two head lengths, the torso being two and a half heads long. Now by changing up these proportions, you're able to make distinct looking characters, and not just characters, but you'll be able to make distinct art styles as well. To get started, I recommend getting used to some standardized proportions. A standard proportion would be something that you can apply very generally to the average person. These mannequins, for example, use these standard proportions. Of course, these proportions don't apply to everybody, but once you understand the standard proportions, you can make slight tweaks to them to change the way your characters look. So for standard proportions, there are a lot of books out there that have proportion charts that you could memorize. I'd recommend looking at a couple of these. Uh, you could probably find them on Google and then choosing one that fits the way you like to draw. Obviously, choose one that's realistic and not stylized because uh, going with stylized proportions would defeat the whole purpose of learning standard proportions. I do understand that if you're somebody who only wants to draw stylized art, it sucks having to learn realistic proportions, but if you're trying to learn how to be in control of the art style you're using, it's kind of a necessary evil. I'll go into more detail on this during the anatomy section. So you need to memorize the proportions and you need to be able to draw them. It's actually really important that you can draw them in two dimensional views like front and side views because if you can do that, you can project these two dimensional measurements in perspective and then draw them in 3D. But that's uh, perspective, so that's a whole different skill you have to learn. Now when you're practicing proportions, it's not necessary to to pay attention to the really small anatomical details like how does the shoulder curve, where does the triceps curve. Instead, pay attention to the big measurements like how many heads tall should an adult be, how many heads tall should a child be. Think about how wide the hips and shoulders need to be in comparison to each other. And once you get more experienced with these proportions, I would recommend looking for some photos of real people and then seeing if you can identify these proportions on them. And to apply this to an art style, it would work in the same way. You find an art style that you like and then identify what the proportions are like in comparison to the standard proportions. Lastly, we'll go over anatomy, and the first thing I'm gonna tell you is that you don't have to have insane levels of anatomical knowledge, so uh, don't worry. Now, anatomy is important for the reason that when we're trying to draw stylized characters, they're stylized versions of what exists in real life. Real life is what we get our inspiration from, and by following that, we can make things more believable. Believability is the important part, and believability comes from following following the physics, not by making an anatomically correct human. The reason why we follow real anatomy though is because it's a convenient blueprint that already abides by the laws of physics. For example, humans have collarbones because the collarbones allow them to lift their arms above their head and keep them there. Dogs don't have them because they don't need to do that. So if you're going to draw a humanoid being that moves the same way as a normal human does, you have to give them collarbones. Technically, you don't have to know what the function is of the collarbone bone just as long as you know that it exists and that when you're going to draw a human you have to have it there that's enough and that's exactly why anatomy is so important because you can basically use it as a cheat sheet so believability is important and it actually applies to everything like if you want to draw a cap for example it's a good idea to study the anatomy of a real cap so you can get an idea of how it works and what its purpose is. And then once you understand the rules, you can play around with them. One of my favorite examples of this is actually Monster Hunter. Because when these monsters are being designed, the designers think about every detail. Like where does it live, what does it eat, 
how does it hunt, and then by studying animals in real life that live in those same conditions, they can find out what kind of traits these animal species have developed and then incorporate those things into their stylized designs to make them more believable. So like I said at the start, you don't need to have classical figure drawer levels of anatomy knowledge, but you do need to understand the thing that you're trying to stylize. If you're gonna try to draw a one piece character, you have to understand why the curve happens in this spot, otherwise you won't be able to apply it to other characters. Basically it just revolves around being curious. If you see something and you can't explain why it looks like this, that means you just have to research it. You might already know this, but Proko has an anatomy course here on YouTube and I would highly recommend following that because it has essentially all of the anatomy that you would need to know to make things believable. So those are basically all the skills you need to know to be able to draw in other art styles. From this point on, you just need to practice these things and be mindful of them while you're trying to draw in a specific style. Observe the proportions and think about how the anatomy was stylized. As much as I would have liked to tell you guys that there's a trick to it, and when you know the trick, you can draw however you want, that's not really the case. Drawing in an art style is purely skill based and you just have to get better at the fundamentals that I covered here. Also, don't think about art styles like it's this really special thing because by doing that, you're just going to create this idea in your head that it's really hard. When in reality, it's just a different way of drawing something. It's basically the same as when you have two objects that are very similar but have slight differences. Like for example, you have a football and a basketball. The core of these objects is the same, but there are just slight differences on the surface and that's how you should see art styles as well. But that's all I wanted to say about this topic, so uh, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and let me know in the comments what else you want to see. Don't forget that if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so through the Patreon or YouTube's memberships link in the description. You can join our Discord server. And once again, thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring the video. The first 500 people to click the link in the description will receive one month of Skillshare for free. But that about does it, so uh, I guess I'll catch you all later.